Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about the Wilson current mirror. Uh, I've drawn the schematic for the current mirror. You can see we still have those uh, Q1 and Q2 mirror transistors. Uh, but notice that in the Wilson configuration, um, we have swapped the um, diode connection. So now Q2 is the one that is diode connected instead of Q1. And we have added a transistor Q3. Uh, very similar to what we did in the base compensated current mirror, except that uh, the collector of Q3 is not connected to the base of Q1 and Q2, but rather it's connected to the collector of Q2. Uh, so this will be the configuration for the Wilson uh, current mirror. Uh, we're going to note that uh, transistors Q1 and Q2 have uh, their bases and emitters directly connected to each other, and so we can assume BBE1 equals BBE2. And if there is good transistor matching, then uh, we're going to be able to assume that the collector currents uh, IC1 and IC2 are also equal to each other. Uh, notice that we have our reference current, and uh, part of that reference current is going to go to the base of Q3, IB3. And then the current uh, that goes into the collector of Q1 is actually going to be equal to I ref minus one base current, uh, IB3. Uh, in this case, we can also assume that transistor Q3 is well matched with Q1 and Q2. Uh, this is different from the base compensated current mirror in that in that case, the collector current of Q3 uh, was feeding the base currents of Q1 and Q2. And so we couldn't necessarily, I mean, it wasn't a very fair assumption uh, to say that the beta for transistor Q3 was equal to the betas of Q1 and Q2, simply because beta depends on the collector current. But in this case, the collector current of Q3 is approximately equal to the collector current of Q2. And so we can actually make the assumption that the collector currents are... Um, the betas are comparable for all three transistors. So I'm going to go ahead and just label this as one base current. I'm going to, um, just to visually see how the circuit operates, is going to call that IB going into the base of Q3. Now, since Q1 and Q2 are matched transistors with the same uh, VBE, if my uh, collector current into Q1 is I ref minus IB, that's also going to be my collector current into Q2. Since I have two base currents going into uh, basically the basis of Q1 and Q2, then uh, by Kirchhoff current law, it must be true that this current is equal to I ref plus IB. Simply because the sum of the, the current center in that particular node, I ref plus IB, uh, must equal uh, the sum of the currents live in the nodes, I ref minus IB plus 2IB. Um, and if now in Q3, um, uh, we could assume that the collector currents are equal, but actually uh, the collector current is equal to uh, the emitter current minus the base current, or in other words, the emitter current of Q3, is R ref plus IB, and that's equal to the collector current plus the base current. If I subtract the base current, I'll have that I out is approximately equal to I ref. And so we can see um, intuitively how the circuit is operating so that I out will be approximately equal to I ref. Now, uh, let's go ahead and do um, the calculations to see. We're going to see that the, you know, the current transfer ratio for the mirror will be close to one, but it's not exactly equal to one. So let's go ahead and, uh, and do those. So I'm going to delete this part. Now my I ref is going to be equal to, as always, um, the current through resistor R, therefore the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance, so VCC minus, uh, and the voltage drop across that resistor is going to be equal to and now notice we have uh, one base emitter junction, VBE1, from ground to the base of Q2. And that is directly connected to the collector of Q2. And then we have another VBE drop over here, VBE3. 
and therefore the voltage at this point uh, at the bottom of resistor R is going to be equal to uh, BBE3 uh, plus BBE1 okay so this is C minus BBE3 minus BBE1 divided by R and if we assume match transistors we're going to approximate the BBEs as being equal this will be VCC minus 2 VBE divided by R. Again, I'm assuming Q1, Q2, and Q3 are matched. Uh, let's go ahead and calculate the current transfer ratio. My IRF current is going to be equal to I see one uh, plus the base current going into uh, transistor Q3. I'm going to uh, clean some of these arrows now so that we can clearly see. So I have this so far. And I'm saying, now I'm not going to make the approximation that um, the base currents are all the same and so forth. So this will be IV3 and this is going to be IC1. So my IRF is equal to um, IC1 plus IB3. That IC looks a little funky. Uh, and then my IE3. the um, emitter current in transistor Q3 is going to be equal um, to IC2 minus uh, two base currents. So if I label in the circuit my IC3 is equal to IC2 and I am going to assume that the base currents of Q1 and Q2 are equal uh, because they, they have the same VBE voltage simply because I am uh, tying those two VBEs together. And so I'm going to just say this is 2 IV2. So I'll have uh, that IE3, which I mislabeled as IC3 here. That should be IE3. Uh, it's going to be equal to IC2 plus, by Kirchhoff current law, 2 times IV2. That's equal to uh, IC2 plus 2 times, and IV2 I can express as IC2 divided by beta. So this is IC2, 1 plus 2 over beta. So far so good. Um, now my IC2 is going to be equal to IE3 then divided by 1 plus 2 over beta. Now, um, IE3 is related to the output current, which is the collector current of IC3. Uh, by a factor of uh, of beta is the emitter current is equal to um, the collector current plus the base current or beta plus one times the base current and so I can uh, rewrite this as follows this will be um, IE3 will be IC3 that's IB3 divided by one plus two over beta which is IC3 plus IC3 over beta divided by 1 plus 2 over beta. So IC2, which is equal to IC1, is equal to IC3 times 1 plus 1 over beta 
divided by 1 plus 2 over beta, which if I multiply numerator and denominator times beta, I can express as 1 plus beta divided by 2 plus beta. And we had written before that I ref was equal to um, IC1 plus IB3. IC1 is the same as IC2 because, again, they have the same VBE, and uh, IC depends on VBE, so all other things being matched. Uh, this will be also equal to IC2 plus IB3. And I'm coming back from this equation here. And uh, so this is equal to IC3. Oh, I forgot to multiply this times IC3 before. IC3 times 1 plus beta over 2 plus beta plus, and then IB3 is equal to um, IC3 divided by beta. So I can express this plus 1 over beta. So IREF will be equal to IC3 times, um, I can write beta times 2 plus beta, and in the numerator, uh, this will be beta times 1 plus beta, Oops. plus 2 plus beta. And so after um, a little bit of manipulation, um, I can see that my numerator I can express as, uh, this will be beta plus beta squared plus 2 plus beta, divided by beta times 2 plus beta. And I can rearrange these terms as uh, 2 plus beta times 2 plus beta divided by beta times 2 plus beta. Number 4, this would be IC3 uh, times 1 plus 2 over beta times 2 plus beta. Now I see 3, you notice know, is just equal to I out, and so I ref equals I out 1 plus 2 over beta times 2 plus beta. And typically, uh, beta is much larger than 2, therefore I can just make the approximation that I ref approximately equal to I out 1 plus 2 divided uh, by beta square. Or my output current ratio, I out over I ref, is equal to 1 over 1 plus 2 divided by beta squared. Now notice that this is a similar uh, current transfer ratio as we achieved with the beta helper. The, um, the base compensated current mirror, except in that case, uh, the assumption that beta of Q3 was equal to the other two betas was a little flaky because the collector current through Q3 was comparable to the base currents of the other two transistors. In this case, um, it is a fair approximation to say that the beta of Q3 is approximately equal to the, other, um, the beta of the other two transistors because they're all more or less carrying the same collector current. And so I'm still uh, achieving a good current transfer ratio. It's still robust uh, to, um, to loading. Uh, in terms of the output resistance, we are not going to do the derivation, but I will write the output resistance for this uh, current mirror is beta times um, R out divided by 2. And so you've improved the um, output resistance of the basic mirror by a factor of beta halves. Uh, and so 
In summary, some of the advantages of the Wilson current mirror will be a good current transfer ratio. So a stable current, um, robust to variations in beta or mismatches in beta. Um, other things that are good about it is that it has a higher uh, R out than the basic mirror. By a substantial amount, beta halves. And trade offs or disadvantages uh, is that, well, obviously we've increased the circuit complexity because we've added a third transistor. So we have a higher component count or transistor count. Um, still not as bad as the emitter degenerated because at least uh, we are adding transistors as opposed to resistors to our circuit which for uh, integrated circuit design will be more desirable, um, as well as our compliance range, lower or less compliance. Um, due to uh, V out minimum uh, is going to be VVE2 plus VCE3 saturation, because notice uh, the voltage at the collector of Q2, since the Q2 is tied directly to the base, uh, is going to be VVE2, and then you need to keep Q3 out of saturation. Um, so your minimum output voltage is going to be VVE2 plus, um, plus the saturation voltage of transistor Q3, whereas in the basic mirror um, it was simply the saturation voltage of transistor Q2. Uh, so that's it for the Wilson current mirror. Thank you.